The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Steve Watson, and Steve is with the Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation. Welcome, Steve. Thank you so much, Cinder. It's thanks, a pleasure to be here. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. So, you know, we've heard so much about the Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation and all the good work that you're doing. And I'd love to hear straight from you what's really going on. And maybe you tell us a story or two. I bet you've got stories. <laughs> there definitely are stories to tell. Well, first of all, why does Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation exist? What do we do? That's the fundamental question. Uh, we serve families throughout the Tri-County area whose kids are diagnosed with cancer. Kids, in this case, defined as anyone under the age of 18. So whether it's a newborn or somebody about to graduate from high school, we're there for them. Um, and there are three principal areas in which we serve our families. The first and most uh, prevalent, let's say, is the direct financial aid. When hmm. they uh, first get their diagnosis, of course, they are working with social workers at the hospitals. A lot of these families, I'd say the majority, lose hours at work or even lose jobs in order sure. to provide for their kids. Yeah. Um, it's an extremely common story. And so obviously they need a lot of financial help, particularly with the other burdens that come with a cancer diagnosis and being away from home, ho the hotel stays, everything oh, else. Sure. And so Teddy Bear provides up to $5,000 of direct financial aid uh, when the kid is first diagnosed. And then if the child later relapses, mm. it, we can provide an additional $2,500 of support. And if the unfortunate occurs and the child passes, we can provide an additional 2,500 to help cover those nasty funeral expenses. Mm. Wow. And beyond that, uh, Teddy Bear, uh, there are a lot of organizations out there that will give you know some financial aid mm -hmm. to these families and thank heaven that there are. Uh, but Teddy Bear doesn't just stop there. It, you know, a lot of those other organizations, they give you their money and then they go away. Um, Th with Teddy Bear, we have our uh, emotional support mm. program, which oh. continues to provide aid for these families uh, even years after the uh, cancer, is, you know, years really? after the kid is cancer free. We have uh, family support groups oh. and special events, uh, family fun days in the summer, holiday parties, uh, Easter projects, Thanksgiving projects, you know, all throughout the year, mother spa days. Um, to help these families to deal with the stress and the burden that huh. comes with a cancer diagnosis in the family because it's it's like getting a new unwelcome family member it kind yeah. of uh, dominates the family dynamic and uh, that those are while the fa financial aid is only available for those who have um, economic problems you know low to medium income families uh, this is available to anyone who is uh, struggling with pediatric cancer Okay, so the emotional support is the one that's available to everyone. Yeah. So and if, even afterwards. Yeah, yeah. If you've got uh, if you've got a kid with cancer, our emotional support programs are there for you. And uh, additionally, we have our education advocacy program, mm. in which it, a lot of these kids, after dealing with cancer, being out of school for a long time, and possibly in the case of say a brain tumor having some neurological damage. Mm -hmm. um, they need a little help getting back into school. Okay. And so we cover uh, up to $1,500 for neuropsychological testing. And in fact, mm. we connect them with doctors who will provide that service wow. for that price. And up to $500 in tutoring services as well to help them get caught up uh, it, academically. Wow, sounds like you've thought of everything, all the aspects. We're trying, we do our best. Um, you know, we have a couple of people on staff who uh, were beneficiaries of Teddy Bear um, mm. 
Uh, Becca Soliden, who uh, was a student at Dos Pueblos High School when she was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. Um, and so we're all there with a lot of heart in this organization. Gosh. We're all very personally And interested. I'll bet the families really appreciate your perspective in the sense that you understand what they're going through and you, and you know just what sort of services to offer to them. Yeah, definitely. Now, to give you um, a kind of typical example of a family and sort of share one of our stories with you. Okay, as we're talking I love it. story at the beginning. I'd like to tell you about a girl by the name of Alana. Okay. Uh, Alana was six years old. Um, she'd been having trouble with balance for some months, and her pediatrician had said, oh, it's probably nothing, but we'll, we'll get an MRI scheduled sometime, and mm. never put in the paperwork. And so finally, a few days before St. Patrick's Day, she mm -hmm. woke up and felt kind of sick to her stomach and had a headache, but it went away after an hour. Then the next day, it lasted for four hours, and then the next day, St. Patrick's Day, it never really went away. Wow. So the family rushed to the emergency room, and they did the MRI and said, you've got a tumor the size of a tangerine right up in your cerebellum in the back oh of your brain. Oh my gosh. So she got airlifted out to UCLA by helicopter that night oh. and uh, with her mother and dad quickly followed. You know, and of course, everything else gets abandoned. Of um, course. You know, career, everything. As I said, it's a very common story. And that first uh, helicopter bill, $70,000. Holy cow. Now, Fortunately, CCS, um, California Children's Services, ended up covering that for the family and a lot of the medical bills. But uh, the dad had to stay in hotels for a long time just to be near uh, mm -hmm, his daughter. Mm -hmm. you know, UCLA is not exactly close to Goleta. Um, right. That would have been quite a commute. Yeah. And so that's when Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation came in. Uh, their social worker contacted us and said, we have a family in need. So they provided several thousand dollars to this family to help to care for Alana and help this family be able to just focus on taking care of each other. And wow. uh, then slowly, you know, over the months, Alana got through her treatments and her parents started attending our family support groups. Mm -hmm. And they said that it really helped them to feel like part of a family, part of a community. Oh gosh. Okay. Because, you know, the, the, their old friends and even their family didn't really understand. No, right, you right, know? right, I can see that. You know, it's something that you have to experience, or at least something like it, in order to understand. Yeah. And uh, you know, being able to connect these families together is absolutely crucial. Yeah. The, the cancer network, the cancer family is a very strong one. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. And fortunately, Alana, in May of this year, completed mm -hmm. her uh, chemo treatments. And so, and she is getting stronger and stronger every day. And she just uh, started up a, uh, I started back at uh, Kellogg School. And so once all of her uh, academic testing is done, she'll be taking advantage of our tutoring programs and our neuropsychiatric uh, exam services. So really this family is very, you know, it has run the full gambit as it were yeah. of uh, the services that we offer. And I can tell you that Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation has been with this family from the beginning, and they've never quit. And yeah. I can tell you that not only as an employee of Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation, I'm also Alana's dad. Oh, gosh. So that's, uh, that's my story, my daughter's story. So that, what a powerful story. Yeah. And uh, she is doing so well, getting so, so much better and so much that. stronger. Um, faster than anyone anticipated. You know, the, the thing that has always defined her is that she never gives up. Mm. And she's still not giving up. Oh, gosh. And we have been so grateful to Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation for all of their support for my family. And so yeah. when she finished her treatments in May and I was able to return to the workforce, mm -hmm. um, I had finished up my PhD right as she was getting uh, her diagnosis, but academia kind of loses interest in you when you're out of the game for a year. Yeah. So when I saw that uh, Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation had a job opening for which I checked off all the boxes, it was an obvious choice for me, you know, an opportunity to give back to one of the organizations that had given most to us during the time when we needed it most. Gosh, so... So you weren't working for Teddy Bear when your daughter was diagnosed. Yeah, I had never heard of Teddy Bear Cancer you, Foundation. So how did at the time. you find out about them? How did you get 
uh, connected. Our social worker, Marla Knoll, okay. um, and all of the social workers at the hospitals in uh, this area are familiar with Teddy Bear. And any family that comes in with those financial troubles, they will get you hooked up with these various organizations. Um, and out of all of them, um, you know, Teddy Bear really, even apart from the fact that they ended up becoming my employer, yeah. uh, has been the biggest overall blessing to my, our family's life. Yes. And I'll bet a lot of families can say the same thing. Definitely. Yeah. We serve, uh, I believe we're at about 190 families this year uh -huh. um, that we'll be serving and uh, providing support for. Um, it is a lot of work, but it's work that we do with love. I can see that. So um, you say the Tri-Counties, you serve the Tri-Counties. Yeah, yeah, we serve the Do you have the facilities in, in all the counties or do they all come uh, our, here? Well, our office is here in uh, Santa Barbara mm -hmm. on State Street. Um, but of course we work with the clinics and hospitals uh, throughout you know, the Tri-County area and beyond. Uh, okay. We have had families, for example, that uh, their address is here in Santa Barbara, say, but because they need some particular specialty, they end up having to travel to Michigan for treatment, or wow. in my family's case, UCLA. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we still provide uh, support for those families because that's uh, our focus here in the Tri-County area. Do you have any sense of whether there are organizations like this in other places? Like do most counties have something like this or is this highly unusual? Well, there are, of course, you know, national organizations and there are resources available. Uh, generally, if you're working with a social worker, they'll mm. be able to hook okay, you up. Okay, okay. But um, at least for the Tri-County area, um, the service Teddy Bear provides is fairly unique. So it starts with the social worker. Yeah. Yeah. Because of course these families coming into the situation, I had no idea what cancer organizations were available. I had never heard of Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation or any of the others, uh, you know, Bumblebee, Alex's Lemonade Stand, Addie's Faith, uh, you know, there, there's a long laundry list of organizations that helped us and, you know, gave us and contributed to us. But uh, Teddy Bear became a second family for us. Gosh, that is, that is just, what, what a powerful story. So if someone wants to volunteer or if they want to find, maybe they even know a child who has been diagnosed with cancer. If they want to find out more about Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation or if they want to contribute financially, um, they could go on your website, can they? And, yeah, yeah. Okay. Our website has uh, it, fairly easy to navigate. Up at the top, it has links for if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate, oh, if good. You want, and from there, all of our various programs throughout the year. Um, you know, whatever area you want your money or time to go to, you'll find a way to be useful and to be part of this uh, this work. That is great to know. And so we have about a minute left. Uh, maybe there's something else you'd like to share with our audience that either you've already said and you want to reiterate it or you haven't said yet? Uh, we have over 500 volunteers on our records and wow. more coming in you know, on a weekly basis. Uh, always someone new coming into the office or helping us you know, long distance. Um, and they are such a blessing. And so whether you can contribute time or money or even just a prayer. Um, yeah. Even something simple, uh, you know, if you go to Amazon Smile, um, mm -hmm. you can, you know, we can contribute to us through that, yeah. you know, that little percentage of everything you buy. Um, it's, there are so many ways to help and the, the website can guide you through a lot of them. Just teddybearcancerfoundation.org. Pretty easy to remember if you can remember the name of the organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. And uh, just a quick thank you to all of the people that have made it possible, you know, mm -hmm. including people like you. Thank you for giving <laughs> us opportunities to share uh, our message and our vision and our goals and uh, all of the people who financially and, you know, with, with their time make it possible for us to do the work. The work. We're a very small office, less than a yeah. dozen people. Great. Well, Steve, thank you so much for all this important work that you do. And thanks for being with us today on 805 Focus. Well, thank you, Cinder. And we'll see you next time on 805 Focus.